This is Margate on the Kent coast, once a Victorian seaside resort, more recently the cool new place for artists and hipsters. And now it provides the stunning backdrop to a new film that's out this week. And here's the coming home. Empire of Light is a bittersweet love story set in the early 80s. The film stars Oscar Award winner Olivia Colman and a host of other headline actors. And it's directed by one of Britain's best known film directors, Sam Mendes. But it's Margate's fabulous locations that steal the show. Most of the action takes place here in Dreamland, a seafront amusement park with this striking Art Deco cinema at its heart, called The Empire in the film. It's where depressed cinema manager Hillary. Did I humiliate myself? Meets Stephen. A much younger usher, played by Michael Ward. I'm meeting Sam and Olivia in the Dreamland Ballroom, the setting for much of the drama. It's mainly a love story, I think. So between these two people, one who has a battle within, who's dealing with mental health issues, one who has an external battle every day, race issues in 1980s Britain. The two fall in love and often meet here. This, once upon a time, was a sort of vibrant ballroom full of people drinking and dancing, and it's been left to sort of fester. And uh, they're the only two people who come into this place. It becomes their sort of secret little, and it's a pretty impressive love nest. And, and for you, Sam, if we think of, of previous movies, James Bond, 1917, this feels very different. For me, this was a very personal movie. It was a more contemplative film about about human beings, but it was also very personal in the sense that the character of Hillary that Olivia plays is loosely based on my mother and her struggles with mental illness when I was a child. And the early 80s is when I grew up. And why Margate? Because of this amazing building, really. It's extraordinary that it's been built right on the front and that it was completely derelict and available for us to use. You know, I'd originally conceived of the script happening on the south coast of England in somewhere like Brighton or, or, or Hove. But I felt when I came here that those places were a little bit quainter. This place felt more real, and they were great to us here. Hillary and Stephen's relationship plays out against many different backdrops in and around the town, and the rides in the amusement park to the beach. No one's watching you. And Stephen's home, it will, it's literally there, yeah. isn't it, that building? Yeah. The only high rise on the whole south coast of England, yeah. I think, practically. There are all these things that just sort of magically fell into place. Built in 1964, the tower block, Arlington House, has certainly stood the test of time, and today's residents have plenty to say about having their home immortalised on film. It's exciting, isn't it? You've got your great all-star British cast. They lit up the whole town. They had the beautiful fireworks display for their New Year's Eve show, and they let everybody in the town know that they were doing it so that they could have their own private show of it, basically, and to get everybody involved in it. I have friends who live all over the world, and, um, you know, they don't really know where Margate is, but it's a big Hollywood blockbuster, and I can show them, and I can say, my, my building, it's right, right there, it can be seen. Many locations had to be adapted to make them work in the film. We needed a bigger lobby than the one we're standing in now, so we rebuilt a lobby two blocks down. The concession stand we had in the, the thing we built was based on this, yeah. and all of these little um, shapes picked up around the ceiling are picked up in the auditorium in various different places. It's yeah. stunning. The team even created a whole new movie theatre in the building. This is the domain of the lonely projectionist in the film, played by the star of Detectorists and Wurzel Gummidge, Toby Jones, who's come to help show us around. Hi, Tobes. You've been here <laughs> the whole time. I've been here for years. <laughs> this space has been totally transformed. What an auditorium. It was an abandoned bingo, bingo hall uh, when we found it, and it was pink. And these chairs we found upstairs in the abandoned cinema and we brought back down and they were just enough to fill the auditorium. Which you'd never know. And I absolutely love your character within the film, Toby. Tell us a bit more about him. My role as a projectionist means that I have a particular relationship with the cinema. It's a curious place to work to, because changing the real necessitated virtually living in the cinema. Toby's role illuminates a central theme in the film, the way cinema gives us a break from our real lives. One of the things I love is, is to just go into a cinema and to be part of an anonymous within a crowd and to watch someone else move into the future through a story so that I, I don't have to for a while. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to know all the 
all the doings about it, you know, going out, going somewhere, choosing my snacks, finding my seat, going in in daylight, coming out at night time. I want to let go and completely throw myself in and believe it, and I love doing that. And this is a perfect movie for that. The film premiered at Dreamland this weekend, and it's been a privilege to visit its locations with its creators.